It's midnight in the city. You're walking home from a late night shift when you catch an instant burst of light in the corner of your eye. Moments later, your phone shuts off. Cars roll to a stop. Everything goes dark and panic sets in. And then you hear distant explosions. Planes are falling out of the sky. The United States has just been attacked with an EMP bomb, plunging the entire country into a total blackout. And the worst part is, they have no idea who did it. In the coming months, infrastructure will be a piece of history, food supplies will dwindle, and chaos will be the new status quo. As far-fetched as this may all sound, it is a very real threat to America, and its adversaries know it all too well. How could you EMP-proof all your devices? Would America ever recover? And why could we lose almost 90% of the US population? Before we answer those vital questions, you need to understand the deadly nature of EMP attacks. Specifically, why they are potent enough to wipe out most of America's infrastructure, and possibly its population too. Oh, that's not good. An EMP or electromagnetic pulse is a type of high energy pulse that can cause catastrophic voltage surges, crippling electrical systems instantly. While cyber attacks sneak in through digital cracks, EMPs can tear through electrical systems like a hurricane ripping apart a city. These attacks can happen using a high altitude nuclear detonation, or even from a device small enough to fit in a suitcase. But it's the nuclear EMPs that pose the most significant threat. A large EMP detonated just 250 miles over Kansas could produce enough electromagnetic interference to wipe out all of the power in the United States. This includes cell towers, transformers, and satellites. Today, the US power grid relies on a limited number of step-up and step-down transformers that transfer high-voltage electricity across its power lines. Although around 2,500 of them are in the US, they make up only 3% of the transformers in America. Despite this, they transfer over 60% of the nation's electricity supply. A calculated EMP attack on just these transformers alone could cause a nationwide blackout. And getting the right tools into US airspace for an EMP attack doesn't seem that complicated. In 2023, a Chinese spy balloon was found traveling across North America for a week. This could have easily transported an EMP. Thankfully, NORAD's radar system upgrades have made balloons like these easier to spot and shoot down. Meanwhile, China and Russia have developed high-altitude EMP weapons. Suspiciously enough, their military training involves cyber attacks and sabotage of critical infrastructure. If either country were to launch a nuclear warhead EMP bomb, the results would be devastating. We asked ChatGPT to research and predict what could happen if the US was hit with a deadly EMP attack. Remember that ChatGPT is only a large language model, so don't expect a highly sophisticated simulation here. Still, the threat of an EMP attack is very real, so stick around to learn about what you could do to survive the worst effects. And to learn more about deadly survival scenarios like these, be sure to like and subscribe to help you stay alive. A nuclear missile is launched into space, detonating around 300 miles above America. There's a flash in the sky and the air feels charged with electricity. Within moments, the nation plunges into darkness. It's so dark. People try to tune into the news, but they can't. Radios are broadcasting static. They huddle in their homes by candlelight and hear distant explosions, the sound of planes falling from the sky. Boats lose control and smash into harbors. Meanwhile, highly populated areas begin emergency evacuation protocols. Most cars in America are left stranded with their electrical circuits fried. Critical life-saving machines in hospitals fail. It's like the world has gone back in time to the 1800s. First responders are overwhelmed by accidents and fires. Flashlights shimmer in the dark as loud voices fill the streets. This scenario isn't just a speculation. The US is highly vulnerable to a large-scale EMP attack due to an aging infrastructure that relies heavily on electrical systems. 
The U.S. Department of Homeland Security released a report in 2022 detailing some recommended steps to avoid the effects of an EMP. Unfortunately, grid hardening and transformer shielding proposals like the GRID Act and SHIELD Act failed to gain support in Congress. This has left the nation incredibly vulnerable. If this were ever to happen in real life, you'd need to act fast, but carefully. With people unable to access their bank accounts, it won't be long before angry crowds begin looting whatever they can get their hands on. Lay low, get to safety, and avoid busy, crowded areas. Steer clear of city centers. If you're close to home, head inside and prepare your survival items. Equip yourself with flashlights, batteries, and basic medical supplies. Get your hands on as much food as you can and keep it in a backpack. Without the power to keep food cool, anything in a fridge or freezer will spoil quickly. Research shows that in the event of a large-scale EMP attack, your chances of survival will stretch thin depending on a number of factors. According to R. James Woosley, former director of the CIA, 90% of the U.S. population would die within a year from hunger, lack of water, and social disruption. So food, water, and shelter are crucial in the early aftermath of the attack. As the country descends into a frenzy, there is no way to acquire reliable information. The source of the outage remains unknown, leading to widespread panic and speculation. What's going on? Government agencies attempt to assess the damage, but communication breakdowns prevent them from gathering concrete facts. Currently, the only publicly known government facilities built to withstand an EMP attack are NORAD and US NORTHCOM, and they conduct monthly exercises to ensure they're prepared. These agencies can quickly relocate to their EMP protected facilities in the event of an attack. However, they aren't actually sufficient enough to evaluate the impact on critical infrastructure during a nationwide EMP attack. Most of the warnings you'll hear at this point will center on safety and security. Don't expect any timeline for the electrical grid to be restored. Meanwhile, people start to realize that the outage is anything but short term, and the looting gets worse. Grocery stores and pharmacies are overwhelmed, and for good reason. Now is the best time to secure more food and water. Get as much non-perishable food as you can before shelves are empty and avoid crowded areas. As the military presence increases, large gatherings quickly turn violent. If you can, get your hands on a battery-powered or hand-cranked shortwave radio for crucial updates from the Department of Homeland Security. Thankfully, they have implemented 77 EMP-sheltered primary entry point stations nationwide for the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System. A few days after the attack, there is an official response from the President, and the U.S. declares a national emergency. FEMA and the National Guard begin to mobilize, but transportation and communication difficulties limit their reach. Troops deploy into major cities to help maintain order. East Coast hubs like Washington DC and Boston remain critical focus areas for the military. Meanwhile, the Midwest is left vulnerable. With most communication down, ground forces start resorting to older analog methods of operation such as radios, walkie-talkies, and face-to-face -face coordination. Over and out. As far as preventative measures go, a major lifesaver for the U.S. military during an EMP attack would be the protection provided by Faraday cages. They provide electromagnetic shielding using electrostatic induction. But they're expensive and haven't been widely adopted yet, so a lot of the military's critical technology is still at risk of being overloaded in this scenario. As a civilian, consider a few DIY solutions like putting your electronics in a microwave or wrapping them in aluminum foil. Meanwhile, back in our simulation, police, fire, and medical services are overwhelmed. Hospitals begin running out of fuel for generators and supply runs. Water treatment plants go offline leading to a higher risk of contamination. There are widespread cholera and other waterborne disease outbreaks without clean water. And with no electrical grid, it's only a matter of time before things start to go awry at America's nuclear power plants. 
The US has 94 nuclear reactors, most of which are located near major population centers. Without electricity to circulate the water and cool the reactors, backup generators are needed to keep them stable. And with fuel running out, they're all ticking time bombs. Back in 2011, during the tsunami that devastated Fukushima, Japan, the city's nuclear plant lost power immediately. Within hours, its reactors began to overheat, leading to partial meltdowns and significant radiation leaks, all in the first week. Let's just hope the US has enough fuel stockpiled to keep this from happening. In the aftermath of these events, daily necessities become critical. Bottled water is a precious resource. Guard it carefully. Otherwise, boil any water you find to ensure it's safe to drink. With no estimates on when fresh supplies will arrive, make sure to ration your food. This isn't the time to explore. If you're in a major city, relocate to rural areas or campgrounds. Anyone reliant on medicine for survival, like diabetics and patients on dialysis, will begin to die in large numbers. As the weeks pass, poor sanitation hits hard, and the death toll rises. And on top of this, large cities experience a complete collapse of law and order. With law enforcement overwhelmed, militias quickly rise by offering protection to desperate communities at the hidden cost of people's autonomy. At this point, life might start to feel like the plot of a post-apocalyptic show or movie, one in which dangerous groups of humans are the biggest thing you'd have to worry about. These local militias will quickly take control of resources, limiting access to basic needs. The government imposes martial law in many regions, but the military's limited reach allows chaos to brew. Warlords claim some regions and begin to spread their influence. In the absence of any formal protection, preparing tools for self-defense remains essential. Get your hands on a baseball bat, kitchen knife, or anything to defend yourself. As resources dwindle and confrontations start to get frequent, survival requires more than just strength. Instead, stealth and strategy offer a top-notch way to avoid unwanted confrontations. The chain of command within the military is twice as fragile in these desperate months. While the US Marine Corps has a history of proactive responses during conflicts, the strain of a prolonged crisis could lead to a rebellion in their ranks. The post-nuclear EMP era is officially the new normal. Rumors of the government taking steps to rebuild die down and are often dismissed as false hope spread by desperate communities. There's no coming back from this. With modern banking and trade systems in ruins, people revert to bartering and trade. Precious commodities like food, fuel, and ammunition become the new currency. Unlike the Silk Road, a trade route which flourished from the 2nd to the 14th centuries, there are no easily accessible trade routes between regions. Railway networks are gone. The people in charge of transporting goods and cargo are protected and held in high regard. Folks with sustainable food sources and trade skills fare much better than most. Farmers, mechanics, and carpenters have an edge over the competition. If you're a banker in this scenario, you better make yourself useful. While the lack of stability destroys most of America, civil unrest will be responsible for a good chunk of the nation's dwindling population, as people must fight for survival. Find a group of allies if you can. This will make things easier as you share resources and responsibilities. Your skills are more valuable than cash, so invest your time into something relevant. Once you're proficient enough, trade your expertise for food, water, and other necessary items. Many self-appointed warlords are overthrown due to poor resource management skills and a failure to maintain loyalty within their ranks. On a larger scale, millions pass away from disease, starvation, and violence. Urban areas are shockingly derelict. Meanwhile, rural areas with access to agriculture fare much better. Thankfully, it's not all bleak. Government-led military outposts begin cropping up. These serve as distribution centers for supplies. You'll want to find a region with one nearby if you can. These are the new centers of the economy, and word of their existence spreads fast. They become a promised land to many. Energy solutions like solar, wind, and water begin to take root in recovery zones. This leads to more opportunities for small-scale agriculture. Trading networks between regions begin to ramp up, but with an already dwindling population, it will take a long time to rebuild. 
According to Forbes, a full recovery from an EMP attack could take years and cost trillions of dollars. As for what to do next, you can choose to live near one of the military outposts and risk dealing with uncertain leadership and living standards. Or with the help of others, you can go off-grid. You could start growing your own food, raise livestock, and find scrap to build a water wheel or a wind turbine to generate electricity. Like a modern day homesteader, many communities around the world live wholesome and healthy lives without electricity, so you might want to study them. Some areas have finally restored power on a limited scale. Finally. The national grid remains down and it will take years to rebuild. Survivors in rural areas must still rely on their own power generation. Following the trauma from oppressive leaders scattered across the country, convincing people to return to the government's rule is no easy goal. Still, the federal government slowly regains control, but they adapt to the new climate by operating in a highly decentralized manner. Military forces remain present in some urban areas, but localized leadership is still powerful. Republicans and Democrats find a compromise in the form of trade and independence. The economy improves slightly thanks to small-scale local production and barter systems. Transportation remains a significant challenge, and people adapt by using horses, bicycles, and makeshift vehicles powered by renewable energy. A backbone starts to emerge for the new economy, and its foundations center on agriculture, handcrafted goods, and manufacturing. It's going to take a lot of cooperation and teamwork to rebuild the nation, but Let's just hope there is a nation still here to rebuild. The scariest part of an EMP attack is that China or Russia could have a first strike advantage. They could knock out power anonymously, preventing retaliation, and then strike again with force. This could effectively break the nuclear stalemate that has kept the US safe. Let's hope we never have to deal with a World War III. We ran an AI simulation of that exact scenario for the hell of it to see what might happen. Find out if we make it out alive on another episode of How to Survive.